This is my presentation to a conference held in Erbil, August 15th, 2018. Ezidi Conundrum, No Escape and No Return. I'm Dr. Amy L. Beam. I'm the author of a book entitled The Last Yazidi Genocide. It contains testimonies and evidence of the genocide based on my four years working with and living with Azidis. You can contact me at amybeam at yahoo.com to buy a copy of the book. I want to thank Prime Minister Netrevan Barzani and Ruda Research Center for sponsoring the conference and the Kurdistan government for providing camps for 200,000 IDPs for four years. Today is the fourth year anniversary of when Daesh attacked Kocho and killed all the men and teenage boys and abducted the women and children. I came yesterday from Kocho, where survivors have gathered to commemorate this Black Day. My NGO has gotten four, 700 passports, most of them for Kocho survivors. The Yazidis today have no good solutions. I offer 11 recommendations that reflect the wishes of Yazidis. The Office for Rescuing Yazidi Abductees has helped financially to return many of the Yazidis from Daesh. The cost of returning one Yazidi has risen from $3,000 to $13,000 or more. This is a serious problem for families to raise this money. The government does not provide financial assistance until after the survivor returns to Kurdistan. So, recommendation number one. Governments and NGOs should identify private sources to finance loans for families to return their loved ones from Daesh. Immigration for Yazidis is blocked unless they are survivors who were raped. Germany and Canada each offered asylum to 1,100 survivors. Germany did not let the men go with their families, so they are suffering from family separation. Recommendation 2. Germany should grant asylum for the men in the survivors' families. Australia is now taking survivors and their families, including the men. Immigration is the main issue for all Yazidis. It is an absolute certainty that all 400,000 Yazidis want and need to leave Iraq, not just survivors. The US, EU, and UN recognized the genocide in 2016, but have not followed up with any solutions in spite of a tidal wave of evidence and pleading for asylum. Recommendation 3. The United Nations should pass a resolution for member countries to grant asylum to all Azidis from Iraq with no other conditions for eligibility. In Sununi, on the north side of the mountain, a man asked me why I was the only American in Chingal helping Azidis. I know the answer. In one word, it is visas. The Iraqi government will not give more than a 30-day visa to foreigners unless they come from Iran, in which case they do not need a visa. Uh, in 2017, the Kurdistan Asayaj blocked me from going to Shingal in Mosul. So in 2018, I flew to Baghdad. It took me four months to get a one-year multi-entry visa so that I would be allowed to visit Shingal. Baghdad refuses to recognize Kurdistan residency IDs or NGOs. The Iraqi army at the checkpoint to enter Nineveh has turned foreigners away, saying their 30-day visas issued at Erbil Airport are invalid. In order to get more than a one-month visa from Baghdad, one must work for an NGO registered in Baghdad or have a contract with a private company or approval from the uh, Minister of Interior. One cannot register an NGO without residency, but one cannot get residency without having an NGO. Humanitarian aid and NGOs are being blocked and Yazidis are being divided between Kurdistan and Shingal as a result of the political stalemate between Erbil and Baghdad governments. Recommendation 4. Baghdad government should grant three-month visitor visas without bureaucratic requirements. Recommendation 5. Erbil and Baghdad governments must resolve their differences to allow free travel between Kurdistan and Shingal. Recommendation 6. The road from Kurdistan to Shingal at Fishkabur should be opened. It is an unwritten camp policy to turn away all journalists and volunteer humanitarians at the camp gates. No cameras and no journalists is the policy. Recommendation 7. 
remove requirements for NGOs and journalists to get permission from Burha and the Doha court before entering the camps. Replace it with a simple ID check and sign-in procedure. I recently visited every Azidi village on the south side of the mountain. The only inhabitable cities for large returning populations are Shengal on the south side and Kanasur and Sununi on the north side. The villages on the south side are all empty, except for Telkasa, where only a handful of families and shepherds are living. Shengal City has electricity about 60% of the day. The villages do not have electricity, because Dash removed the cables from the utility poles in many villages and destroyed the electric plants. Electricity was restored two weeks ago for Tel Kassab. There is no government water except for half the city of Shangal. Houses must rely on their own well water or buy from a truck. Not all well water is safe for drinking. Many of most of the cell phone towers are destroyed. The government gas station in Shangal City often runs out of fuel. There are no shops, no schools, no clinics, and no economy in the villages. There is no way for Azidis to sustain life. Explosions have killed returning Azidis every month in 2018. The Iraqi army started bomb removal two weeks ago. Tokasab and Tel Banat are now clear of bombs. Houses that were not exploded by Daesh were burned to a black crisp. The doors, windows, electrical wiring, fixtures, and plumbing have been ripped out of the houses. To defeat Daesh, coalition airstrikes destroyed many major buildings that Daesh used as headquarters, including schools, government buildings, and chicken cooperatives. No compensation has been made to any family whose property was destroyed by Daesh or by the coalition. Azidis do not have money with which to return to Shangal. Recommendation 8. The European Union should fund and implement its resolution passed November 20th, 2014 for Quote, the establishment of an international fund to be set up in order for the Yazidis to return to their lands and for the infrastructure to be restored. End quote. Recommendation 9. Kurdistan should establish offices. The electricity just went out. The back of generators just come on. That was a little glitch. Recommendation 9. Kurdistan should establish offices for former Shingal residents to file claims for compensation for property damages, including claims against the coalition. Settle claims on an emergency basis within three months. Recommendation 10. Money that is being spent by the governments to maintain the IDP camps should be redirected to pay claims for property damages and to rebuild the infrastructure of Shingal. The only way Azidis will return to live in Shangal is to have their own protected region. They do not want to be governed by Kurdistan because the Peshmerga left them on August 3, 2014. Neither do they want to be governed by Baghdad. They see no hope of getting what they want. This is why they are seeking immigration. Recommendation 11. Implement the European Union's 2014 resolution to create an autonomous Azidi region. With the support of Baghdad and the UN, Azidis should have their own defense force to defend this region. I urge each of you to work for implementation of these recommendations. Thank you.